Greetings, Internet. I am Ken from the Computer Clan, and today on Tidbytes, it's special because I'm on location in a very cold place. We're going to have some fun with dogs today, but for good reason. I'm going to show you the differences between RAW photography and JPEG photography, and why you probably want to set your camera for RAW photography if you want to edit your photos later. There's some great advantages to it. But first, a word from our sponsor, Full Sail University. Fun fact. Full Sail was the first university I looked into going to. And I bet you're watching this video right now on a website or a mobile app. Well, guess what? A lot of industries rely on those technologies, so why not consider a career in one of them or both? Full Sail University offers undergraduate degree programs in software development, website development, and mobile apps. You'll receive a laptop and you will be using the same tools that professionals use. To learn more about these great programs, please visit this link that is available in the description. Raw photography, you really want to capture those great moments and get those great shots composed and bring them back to your computer and be able to take full advantage of the data you capture through your sensor and stored onto your little SD card or whatever you use to record your pictures. A lot of consumers are familiar with the model that's on the left, a JPEG. Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? And they're pretty standard. You see them on the internet, you'll see them on people's computers, a lot of consumer cameras record in JPEG. They're pretty great still. And then, on the right, you have RAW, which we'll be talking about a lot more soon. Now, each time when you take a picture, there's certain parameters that make up the picture. Some basic examples are exposure, temperature, and tint. Exposure has to do with the intensity of your highlights and shadows. The temperature has to do with the warmth or coolness. And tint has to do with the little bits of green and a bit of a pink magenta color you know, that might show up in the image. And sometimes we need to correct that. What if the photo is too dark or too bright or too warm or too cool or it's tinted green or pink or magenta-y and it's like, ugh. We want to change that stuff. You may just think, well, I'll bring it into an editor and change it, right? Well, only so far. A JPEG is compressed. If you want to edit the photo, the software cannot directly modify the source. Let's say you wanted to bring up the exposure. The software would basically stack up effects on top of the source material, making your adjustments. And the more that's stacked up on top of your picture, well, the quality will start going down and it just may look like crap in the end. And that's where RAW kicks in. Let's say I wanted to adjust the exposure, the temperature, and the tint in a RAW photograph. The good news is all of that data is stored and minimally processed so we can really dive in and change those settings directly within our post-production software, whether it's Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop or something else. We have a lot more control over how we can make the photo look in the end product with raw photography. Sometimes raws are referred to as digital negatives. So kind of think of JPEG like processed meat in a can. You know, it's, it's cheaper, yeah, whatever but it may not be the best. And then think of raw as like, mmm, that delicious ham served at a gourmet restaurant or at, you know, a Christmas dinner, you know, that's mm, good, not processed. So JPEG, spam, canned meat, processed, raw, fresh meat, right from the deli, right from the butcher, mmm, delicious. That's a good way to remember it. JPEG isn't all bad. Like we talked about, it's not very editable because those files are compressed. The good news is that the files are small, they're compatible with a lot of phones and computers, they're easy to distribute, and the colors are restricted to 8 bits per channel. With RAW, the photo files are very editable, there's a lot of data there. The file sizes, however, are large and the photos aren't easy to distribute, but they're made for post-processing, they're made for developing. Just like when we would shoot an actual physical negative with film, you wouldn't really be sharing that with your friends and family until you brought it into a dark room and blew it up. And RAW lets us store about 12 to 14 bits per channel. It will probably vary depending on what camera you use. Now, what does the bit stuff mean? Well, <laughs> I have some videos that talk about how bits apply in digital information, and I'll probably be cranking out more Tidbytes videos on that stuff later, but it has to do with 
values. And in this case, levels of intensity or shades. With a JPEG, 8 bits per channel, channel meaning red, green, and blue channels in colors, 8 bits per channel gives us 256 shades per channel. Whereas with the 12 to 14 bits with RAW, we get about 4,096 to 16,384. So we can have a lot more shades, a lot more quality, and again, a lot more control over the light, the exposure, the color, and just be able to create a lot better end product with RAW photography. So turning on this mode is pretty simple. In fact, a lot of cameras that are DSLRs or mirrorless cameras that are designed for photography will probably have it on by default. But just make sure to check your menus to see that it's on. And some cameras will even let you shoot RAW and JPEG simultaneously. If you're using more of a consumer end camera, this option may not be available. But if you want to really get into photography, I seriously recommend going up to a different model of camera. And if you'd like, you can actually click this card and take a look at some of the gear I use. I do use Canon DSLRs and I do recommend them. So maybe have a look at one of those bodies for yourself. And I mean camera bodies, not like a cadaver. Anyway, let's have a look at an example photo I shot with the sled dogs here. So here is a photo that I have made edits to. I changed exposure and shadows and highlights and saturation and probably a bunch of other things. And you're not going to see the full quality of the picture because you're looking at this over YouTube with a compressed video. But if you look, you'll see the colors and the noise and the grain is just, ugh, it's kind of messy and gross. Well, that's because I was editing a JPEG. The photo is already compressed and processed. There's not much I can do to it besides stack effects and modifications on top of the source. But now take a look at the result when I edit the raw photograph. It is night and day different. Look at how beautiful that is. That is a raw photograph. Now that's with photos. What about with video? Well, there are companies that design cameras that can shoot in raw video. I, as of right now, do not own one, but I do have my eyes set on some Blackmagic design products. So if you want, check out some of these products and maybe get one for yourself. Try one out because you can shoot raw video with these products here. Just imagine seeing this stuff, what I can do with a raw photo. Just imagine what you can do with raw video. It'd be pretty magical. So that's a quick look at the comparisons of raw photography and JPEG photography. And remember, if you want to get some of this gear for yourself, just click the card or look in the description below. There's a link for you. And if you liked what we did here, feel free to leave us a like and let us know how we did. That's all I have for you today, and I'll see you in the not-too-distant future.